Behold, the ancient red dragon. I 3D printed, cleaned, cured, and painted this monstrosity in about a 24 hour period. I thought it would be an excellent stress test for the new Elegoo Saturn II 8K 3D printer. Also, my group is coming to the end of Out of the Abyss and we're gonna need one of these for the next campaign. Anyway, I documented my experience on video and here it is. This is the Elegoo Saturn II. It's got an 8K 10 inch mono LCD screen. Elegoo did provide it to me, but you'll see my conclusions are my own and the results will speak for themselves. Now the overall packaging quality and setup experience is the same as I've had with many other printers, which is to say it's well packed and it's easy to set up. The build plate on this model is particularly beefy, not just large, but like heavy and you'll see in a moment the leveling screws are substantial. This model also comes with a mini air purifier, something I haven't seen before. It looks like it's USB powered. I didn't end up testing it because I put my printers in my garage, but this printer does run very quiet. I mean, you could sleep next to it. And I guess this device kills all the vapors. Nice touch, assuming it works. Again, I didn't test it. But yeah, man, look at these chonky leveling screws. Look at the size of this Allen wrench. I have not seen this before. And this is the style of plate where you simply loosen the screws and then the spring loadings within that coupling force the plate downward and level. So all you do is take the card that comes with it, which sets the correct depth between the screen and the plate, let the plate spring load itself down, and then tighten the screws in place. It's not a new feature, but man, is it elegant. And it's the right way to build these things. I continue to like the build quality. The materials are a nice selection. The red works. It's a good mix of matte plastics and milled aluminum, and the black, white, and silver accents complement it very nicely. The LCD control panel is color, and it's touch. Honestly, I've never really cared much about the control panel, long as it works, and this does work. And the thumb drive that comes with it has a slicer on it, which is what I used, works perfectly fine. It's also got a test print, which I didn't bother with because I was literally foaming at the mouth to get this dragon printed. So I went for it. I threw together three batches of parts to get the dragon printed, and decided to be bold and just go for it. I tell you, these printers are getting closer and closer to straight up plug and play. Two quick tips I will give you. I recommend changing the bottom exposure time to 50 seconds. And then also for your platform touches, use skates, which are the default, but change the diameter to 22 millimeters and the thickness to 2.5 millimeters. These tweaks will help ensure adhesion to the build plate. Here's a piece of the wing, and at a glance, it is there. It is. It looks like an off-the-sprue, hot-injected model part. Now, I was under the gun for time, so I also printed a few parts on my Anycubic Photon Mono X, which is a 4K printer. And I thought it would be useful to see these parts side by side and see what the difference truly is. That printer is certainly also worth its salt. And as I compare these orange parts, which were made with the 4K, and the gray parts, which were all made with the Elegoo 8K Saturn II, I must say the difference is basically not there. I mean, I have my camera cranked way in, closer than the naked eye is gonna look at it. And these parts are pretty darn comparable. The Saturn II seems to print cleaner with fewer anomalies, but I don't know if that's a function of the resin itself or any of the other myriad settings involved in slicing up a model. But if you look at the bony ridges, the difference is, well, this is a 1080p YouTube video, so the difference is probably imperceptible. It is there if you really, really inspect. You can kind of see the lateral voxelation with the 4K, whereas the 8K, again, looks like an off the sprue model part. But man, it is subtle. I'll go ahead and spoil my conclusion up front here. This Saturn II 8K printer is phenomenal. If it's only 100 US dollars more than a 4K model, Go for it, future-proof yourself, you'll be done. If printing gaming miniatures is your thing, I think this is the end of the road. But if you happen to find some 4K resin printer that costs significantly less, you're gonna be just as happy with that, honestly. So anyway, gluing this all together and using some baking soda and super glue along all the weld lines, which I've never done before, and you'll see it kind of shows because I, I thought I sanded well enough, but I did not. What I should have done is just print these parts whole, vertically. All right, let's paint this. We're gonna start off with God's gift to humanity, Rust-Oleum 2X Flat Gray Primer. And with that nice primer on there and everything unified, it's starting to really get exciting. This further allows us a true apples to apples comparison. 
You see a lot of dimples sort of in certain spots on the model. That's where the supports connect to the piece. And that's not the fault of the printer. That's the settings that I used to ensure that I had a good grip on the piece. You can get better results than that by changing the diameter and the depth of your support contacts. But these are big, heavy parts, and I didn't spend much time at all trying to optimize it. Because again, I was on a short timeline with this video. All right, solid base coat with a red. Probably could have spray painted it with red, but then I'd have to buy a $15 can of, you know, army painter or something. So solid base coat with red. Then I mixed up a nice shade. Just one drop of black acrylic ink, and then a whole bunch of red acrylic ink, a little bit of flow improver, and just a, a sousant of water. I'll mix that up and slather it over the entire piece to wash it and shade it down. By the way, I bought this dragon model on myminifactory.com from a maker called Lord of the Print. I'll have a link in the video description below. So it looks a little blown out in the camera here, but underneath all the scales are now shaded quite nicely in real life. I took an orange and my dry brush and just went upwards, always upwards, never downwards, against the grain on all of these scales to get some instant cheap highlighting. Horns and claws and chest plates all got painted beige and then washed with Army Painter Flesh Tone. Just a nice light brown sepia color. Will complement the red nicely, I thought. Done. I don't like layering. I don't like edge highlighting. I don't have time for it. I have two kids. Man, I love how this turned out. It's got a slight sheen to it, since even clear coat rattle cans that say they're a matte or flat finish end up having some sheen to them. But I think it works for a dragon. Slight bit of shininess. Now the model was $20, and then this is probably about $20 in resin, because this thing is solid. It weighs like two pounds. So you could find a comparable, like WizKids Mini or something like that ancient dragon probably for cheaper than those things combined but if you're investing in resin 3d printing it's probably because you intend to do it for the long haul and over time it will start to pay for itself also i'll say the large build plate on this saturn 2 is essential i think you should always go for as big a build plate as you can afford and so to revise my conclusion from earlier depending on the 4k printer you're looking at that may be a differentiating factor the size of this 8k build plate phenomenal yeah so final verdict plug and play out of the box easy to level excellent build quality parts look like they're hot injected no layer lines and more importantly with the 8k screen there's no lateral jaggedness is it that much better than a 4k printer Again, because of the large build plate that you naturally have to have with a resolution this size, there's an advantage there. Is the smoothness of the overall product that much better? Eh, it technically is noticeable, which is why I default to the cost argument. Again, I firmly believe that this 8K printer is the end of the line. It's the last one I'll ever need to own. I cannot fathom how it could get better than this. But if your budget doesn't support that, you will be happy with a 4K printer as well. Just my honest takeaway. Well, big thanks to Elegoo. I have to go and do four more dragons. I'm doing the whole chromatic set. Actually, I've got the blue one done already. Got to get this guy painted. Probably going to be up till 2 a.m. tonight. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I'm Wylock. Make things and play games. Music